Hey everybody, John Pliskina here, but not with the second Renaissance Thoughtcast. I feel like I've outgrown that branding because originally I wanted to have a YouTube channel that was more like a podcast where it was mostly audio and I was mostly just discussing general interest, but it has evolved into being more like the daily show for anarcho-capitalists and Trump supporters. And I embrace that. And I think that we need to make a few changes to the branding in order to reflect that. And that's in progress. So for the moment, I'm just John Bluskina. And somebody left a really awesome message on my Facebook page. It was so good that I felt the need to run out and make a quick video on my lunch break. His name is Jay, and I'm going to obscure his last name and his profile picture because he left a message on my Facebook page. He didn't volunteer to be in a video. But I had enough interesting things to say about this that I didn't think that a Facebook comment really worked. I thought that everybody should have this information. All right, so here's what he had to say. I like that you blast Ryan for claiming to support the free market while letting Trump get away with forcing Apple to make iPhones in the US. So principled. Now he's being a little bit snarky, but that's okay because he's right. I should have talked about this by now. The problem here is that there's countries like China and Russia that are engaged in behavior that you could refer to as economic warfare. They manipulate their own currency and they use their political clout to force organizations like the International Monetary Fund to give them sweetheart deals. Now. Jay's a libertarian and I'm an anarcho-capitalist, and I suspect that there's at least one thing that we agree on, and that is the non-aggression principle. The idea that it is never moral to initiate the use of force. The only acceptable use of violence is in self-defense. So state power is fundamentally immoral because it's based in violence. Why does anybody really care what Hillary Clinton or Barack Obama or George W. Bush or, or even Donald Trump, why do, they care what, why do they care about their opinions on policy? Is it really because they're such incredible experts on everything? No, it's because they get into power and then they can command armies of men with guns to make you follow their opinions. I will say that if I was going to found a society from scratch today, it would still have a state for a couple of reasons. One, there's a market demand for a state because most people think that they need one. And that's really unfortunate. And that is a problem that I'm doing my part to solve with my books and music. I think that that's a cultural problem. We have to use art and we have to use logic and reason to convince people that that's wrong. And the other reason is because it is moral to use violence in self-defense. So I think that it is moral to use tariffs to counteract the aggressive actions of other countries. But there's even more to it than that, because there is evidence to suggest that these trade deals have been bad for the American civil society. It seems like Ross Perot was right. There was a giant sucking sound, and we did lose a lot of manufacturing jobs to third world countries. And those jobs are important because they give unskilled workers a way to make enough money to raise a family in a reasonably comfortable fashion. Now, I do believe that a real free market could absorb this pressure, but we don't have a real free market. We have one of the highest corporate tax rates in the world. And the Obama administration alone has put out something like, I think, 20,000 regulations on top of all the ones that were already there. They don't seem to ever get rid of any of these regulations. Many businesses operate in a state of complete confusion where they have no idea if they're criminals or not. And so it, it, we can't fix all that right at once, right away. I wish that we could. But for one thing, anarcho-capitalism is not on the ballot. I know that libertarianism is on the ballot with Gary Johnson, but... I don't think that Gary Johnson has the intestinal fortitude to do this. If Gary Johnson is a true outsider, and I have my suspicions that he is not, but let's say that he is. Let's say that Gary Johnson really is a real libertarian, and if he gets elected, he's going to do everything in his power to create a libertarian utopian state. Well, here's the problem. Gary Johnson would face exactly the same pressure that Donald Trump is getting now. This is going to happen to anyone outside the system who tries to take power. And it's because the entrenched interests would end up in prison if somebody who is going to enforce the law in a fair and reasonable fashion got into power. They would fight just as hard to stop Gary Johnson as they're fighting to stop Trump now. And I don't think that he has the personality to survive it. Now, I know that that's a subjective judgment, but do your own research into this stuff and do your own research into Gary Johnson and see what conclusion that you come to. So that's actually pretty much all I got on that particular topic. My next video is going to be about these these uh, sexual um, 
sexual assault charges that are coming out against Trump. I'm hoping that'll be out pretty soon and that, uh, that that's going to have my new branding to replace the second Renaissance Thoughtcast. As always, I really appreciate all of you. Thank you, Jay, for your insightful comment. I don't mind that you're snarky. I really appreciate that you made a substantive criticism. That's great. And uh, this is what I love. There's nothing more fun to me than having a substantive disagreement about politics and about philosophy. So anybody who, who has a disagreement with me from any, any part of the political spectrum, please, please feel free to leave a comment like that and let me know. Uh, and that's it. It's a harsh world out there, my friends. Keep thinking.